I've been picking up a pen long before AI became a thing. Like Andy Byrne, I make webcomics. I remember watching her videos back when Webtoons was doing its call to action contest. I had them playing in the background as I drew. Videos about restarting your series, about how Webtoon treated its creators, about general webcomic making stuff. So I figured if anyone was going to approach AI discourse with nuance and compassion, it was Andy. Honestly, I'm just surprised that any anti-AI person actually wanted to be friends. I didn't expect that at all, not even from ND. If you haven't gathered already, I'm pro-AI. And first off, I am sorry about how other AI supporters have behaved. I really am. My opinion is going to be based on what I saw in my comment section when I put out a video about using AI in art. And I was a bit shocked by the response to it. One particular comment that stuck with me most was, it's all fear. You artists, you're afraid of new technologies and it's just all emotional. I thought a bit about that and my answer is, hell the f yeah, it is fear. And yes, we are afraid that everyone and their mom's friend is going to be able to put out imagery of fantasy stuff or, or just any stuff that used to be drawn by people who can actually draw and who took their time to learn it. So yes, we are afraid. So we're both afraid, both parties of something being taken away from us. And we're also both afraid that something could get out of our control. I'm going to be jumping around a bit and grouping the topics a bit more differently than ND did and of course I'll be cutting out a lot so please watch the original video for the full context. If you think of school, kids who can draw, they are sometimes admired and I think in my case, just a very personal point of view that I want to give you is I did not have a lot in terms of being popular at school. The only thing that never failed to impress people was my artistic skill. On the other hand, I was very unimpressive and I think very underwhelming as a person. So this was my superpower and it would be so satisfying to take it out, not brag about it, but just be like the kid who can draw that stuff and then suddenly gets attention for once. Yeah. It's like you say in my comment section, you just want attention. Definitely we do. I mean, it's our superpower. Why should we not want to take credit for it. And of course, I know that you guys are capable, if you look at it from that standpoint, that you're capable to see that this does suck. When you are special for this very little thing, and then suddenly everyone can do that. There is another side to this, which is that we artists should also realize that the making is still the fascinating part. So this is not going to be taken away from us. I think we can still impress people in our daily life. This does sound pathetic when I say it, but it really is about impressing people by being able to do something. And if you take that a bit further down the line from our school years, then it's definitely worth being able to impress people while others can't. With your artistic skill, you will get yourself a job. Everybody with a sane mind can wrap their head around that and be able to understand that this sucks for us. Someone who's terrified of talking about my issues for fear of being seen as attention seeking. I absolutely despise how we condemn attention seekers. If you don't want to give us attention, then just fucking ignore us. Does it matter if it's pathetic? We don't hurt anyone by being pathetic. One of our worst tendencies as a society, in my opinion, is thinking that being weak makes us bad people. Why hate someone for being weak? They're the ones suffering for it, not you. It's okay to be pathetic. It's okay to want approval. I want approval. I personally didn't get it from art as much as a kid because I didn't know who to show it to in real life and the fear of attention seeking has already gotten to me at that point. So it's not as tied to art for me, but I'm a huge attention whore. I have this whole not like the artist thing going on here where I feel like a badass going against the mainstream opinion of the art community as an artist. It's pretty cringe, but it's okay to be cringe. It's okay to want attention. 
What's not okay is to believe you're entitled to attention, to guilt trip people into giving it to you, and condemn them for their lack of support, to hold them responsible for whether you decide to continue drawing or writing fanfic or heck living. And a related hot take I've always had is that it's okay to be arrogant. You are like not to brag, but seriously, what's wrong with bragging? At least in the sense of showing off. It's just openly displaying your abilities, and I guess that might make some people feel insecure. But again, I blame our condemnation of weakness as a society. The only reason we feel bad when other people are better than us is because being bad at stuff somehow means you're a terrible person. It's okay to think highly of yourself. What's not okay is to mock others for their incompetence, to taunt people about how much better you are than them, or believe you deserve more than others because of your superior skills. What's not okay is to believe you have a right to walk all over your inferiors, to perpetuate that culture of lionizing strength and condemning weakness. Who deserves what is irrelevant. What matters is who has power. And yes, AI users certainly have a tendency to do that, and I wholeheartedly condemn it. What I need you to understand though is that AI users are not a monolith. Not all of us use AI just because we can. Some of us have actual moral disagreements and reject your assessment that AI is harmful. Shocking isn't it, that someone could disagree with something as obvious and self-evident to you as the fact that flight and palm oil is bad for the environment. This is a thing I sometimes do when I think something might be really bad, but I really want to do it right now. So I'm also saying I uh, think that this discussion about using AI for art or not should be very much focusing on art because in other areas of our lives, we do villainous stuff all the time, all of us. One example is that when I go on holiday, I wrestle a bit with myself. Should I go there? Should I not? It's not good for the environment. And and then you see that pearly white beach with that turquoise water, maybe lots of tourists, who cares? But then you think, oh my God, I, I earned that so much. I worked so much to, to be able to afford this holiday. And now I just lay down on that beach and just enjoy myself. Or I might be standing in front of a shelf in, in a store and look at my favorite dessert and then I check and I see I see that little word straight away palm oil but I'm telling you 50% of the times I would still buy it because my emotions overweigh and I think oh I can't live without eating this specific ice cream and then <laughs> eating it in five minutes and for that it was worth it I think it's a bit similar although I don't uh, expect anyone to have such an extensive analysis of whether they should use or not use AI. Just to give you a bit of context that all of us do those villainous things that General Thrawn is talking about. Hey, it just depends on whether you can do it or not. Just do it. And then just do it because it makes sense that I'm doing it because that's the only thing that brings me to the next point. While other people, they think about, hey, is it really worth for me to get to that next point or get that satisfying feeling when it's actually really bad for other people? I'd believe it. It does seem like most AI users don't really think about the moral ramifications and just use it because they can. After all, there are way more anti-AI discourse videos than pro-AI discourse videos. With most pro-AI videos being concrete level direct stuff like how-tos and such. But I hope you're not implying that everyone who uses AI are like that, that we haven't thought things through or choose to go screw it and do something we think is bad anyway in order to satisfy ourselves. Maybe that applies to normally anti-AI people who make an exception for memes and trivial silly fun, or anti-AI artists whose chat GPT or character.ai, or someone like Ergo Josh who thinks we might as well embrace it because it's here to stay all the normies you're talking about. But full-on AI bros don't think AI is immoral at all. Full disclosure, I am a straight-up IP abolitionist, but I'm going to talk about whether or not AI art is theft from the perspective of someone who does condone copyright, because that's the majority on both sides and thus the default assumption. Say I type in and I see an electric crockpot cable power outlet steam, two people sitting on the floor facing each other holding balls, eating a band and building brown head And get this, who is this girl? Who is this guy? Who's this random child with a dislocated leg? Whose characters are they? What location is this and who owns it? Who owns this style? 
The output has no resemblance to any of the inputs. If it was a human artist who looked at the training data for reference and ended up drawing this, it would be absurd to claim this is copyright infringement. Now the usual counter to this is, oh but humans take inspiration from references and consciously reinterpret them, which makes it transformative. AI doesn't do that. Well, yeah, I agree, it's dumb to say that AI are inspired in exactly the same way humans are, like it's consciously looking at art and making decisions. That's not what I'm saying. The point of the comparison is that we've never called something art theft solely because 0.001% of an image draws directly from a specific source. If you take stuff from one artist, it's plagiarism. But when you take stuff from many artists, it's called inspiration. But when a machine takes from many artists, it's plagiarism again, somehow. And then what? The human mind interpreting a piece automatically makes it transformative? I guess that means I can trace your OC and recolor it to fit the OC I have in mind, and you can't say I'm committing art theft, but you will, and I know you will. I remember early 2010s DeviantArt. Or maybe you need both indistinguishability from original sources and human interpretation for it to be transformative? Maybe that's what you guys are saying? But at that point, you're just tacking on epicycles to get to the conclusion you want. No principle behind it at all. But again, I'm an IP abolitionist. I put my stuff in the public domain and actively encourage people to steal my work. I never understood why people hate their art being stolen. Or rather, I understand on an intellectual level, but I don't relate at all. To me, watching you all complain about art theft is kind of like watching someone being drawn on with a highlighter and them going, Ah, it burns! It hurts so much! Like, I'm sorry that it hurts you. You're clearly in pain and I take no delight in that, but sorry, I can't really empathize. I'm just not feeling it. Maybe it's the STEM lord in me? I can tell that the AI using community is different in terms of what they want to do with art or what it means to them. Now, there are some things overlapping with us, but there seem to be a lot of people who are from the technical field, like for example, developers or engineers. Not all of you, of course. I get that giving a developer a program that can be influenced by a language and mathematical terms that visualizes something, an idea or, or just a world or a law, seems to be holding the same fascination as the paper and the pen for artists. And that's also why there are so many comments, I guess, in my comment section saying, what's your problem? We don't get it. <laughs> of course you don't get it, because while the outcome might look similar, the making process is very different. I'm not a developer or an engineer. My background's in pure math. I can't code my way out of a paper bag, and installing stable diffusion locally onto my laptop gave me a splitting headache. But I do identify more with the STEM side of things when it comes to the culture of sharing your work. Like, have you noticed that the free and open source movement is a software thing? Open source art, on the other hand, is virtually unheard of. I guess there's people making free assets and bases, are those still a thing? But the art community has always been very cancel all the art thieves and don't steal my OCs ever since I was a kid. And I think that's just an attitude lots of STEM types don't understand. Is it about the struggle, the effort, about not wanting others to freeload off your hard work? Prompting is certainly easier than drawing, but coding sure as heck is a struggle. But programmers happily steal each other's code without credit all the time, without offense. I don't know if this is actually the dominant attitude of AI bros. A lot of them aren't actually machine learning experts, judging by how hilariously misinformed a lot of their takes are. And you mentioned in one of your other AI videos that people get really possessive of their prompts. Honestly, I can't speak for them because I understand them just as little as I understand you guys. But I found this worth mentioning anyway because I feel like it's a significant, even if not universal dynamic that you've missed. I'm aware that most people watching this channel are artists, a lot of them are comic artists and we have different opinions about AI art within our community because comic artists per se, we use a lot of time drawing the same thing over and over again from the same perspective, the same colors. It's not like we're always making new artworks with lots of creativity. A lot of what we're doing feels automated, it feels mechanical. So there are a lot of people among us who, who really rely on tools that make it easier to 
do what we want to do. I mean, if anyone came up to us and tells us, hey, you can feed an AI model with your art or with your what, what you are doing all the time and it will do it for you, the mechanical processes, but you still have the power to control what the, the image is going to look like, I think a lot of us would say, hey, yeah, sure, we're going to take that. On the other hand, it's still very much for all of us, whether we draw comics or anything else, we still want to be involved in that drawing process because for us, if you offered us a program with a text box where you could just write in linguistic terms and those linguistic terms would be turned into an image, as opposed to giving us a white piece of paper and a pen, we would always choose the paper and the pen because that's how we are wired. I guess most of us, I think there are now artists young enough who grew up on drawing on an iPad, but I would say 99% of us, we started off with a fascination for pens and that they can make marks on a paper. Well, no, I'm not wired that way. I actually don't like drawing that much. I didn't pick it up out of a fascination for pens and how they made marks on paper. It was growing up with shows and games that I liked and wanting to make something like that. The process very much does not matter to me. My interest in drawing has always been results focused. I guess I'm in the minority here. Maybe because most people who only dreams of results end up getting distracted by other things they actually enjoy doing for its own sake, so they end up with no drawing skills, then pick up AI when it comes out. Whereas I was bored and poor and had no friends, so there was nothing to do but draw. Maybe I just don't get it. I don't get why you can't just automate the tedious repetitive parts and manually draw to whatever degree you enjoy. Well, okay, with the current state of things, it's clearly because of your anti-art theft values combined with the fact that AI sucks at keeping things consistent and also doesn't integrate well into most of your workflows as it outputs a flat image, not separated by line art, base colors and shading and all that. But if all that was solved, would you really still use it? It's as you said, a lot of comic making is automated and mechanical. But on the other hand, you can no longer claim that the entire thing was made by you. Contrary to what everyone keeps saying about AI users, I don't actually give a crap about being an artist or being seen as the one who made a piece. Maybe it's somewhere on my list of priorities, but it ranks far below wanting my ideas to exist. And AI helps speed that up, so there's less of a risk of me fucking dying or breaking my wrist before that happens. The tools that I mentioned for me to use as a comic artist that just takes my stuff and puts it into a model to make my own art without stealing art from other people. This might exist, but for that, I have not drawn enough art in the very style I'm drawing in to make this real. Or maybe I'm just too lazy to train a model. Maybe I think that actually I could use this time just drawing my comic instead of training a freaking model to do that. Or I'm still in love with the process, so I don't want to train the bloody model. I don't want a model to make my art. And once I feed a model with my art, maybe someone else is going to take it. There's just too much uncertainty. Now, first up, I'm not trying to tell you or anyone to start using AI. I'm not one of those adapt or die types. And obviously, you should make your work however you darn well want. Secondly, it's true that there's no way currently to train a model exclusively on your art. You can build off an existing model with just five extra pictures, but the model was already trained on like two billion other images. And of course, to train a model from scratch, you need two billion drawings of your own, which you aren't going to be able to draw within your lifetime. But there are models like Common Canvas that are trained exclusively on images in the Creative Commons, and you can build off them, though I personally don't know how to do that. And I obviously don't care if someone takes my model and runs with it, but I do get the other reasons you're saying here. I've only attempted to train some models myself in the last month, and I've yet to be successful. I didn't even pick up AI in general until like mid this year. That's way after I first heard about AI, which I supported from the get-go because, you know, IP abolitionist. 
Partly this was to make a point. I wanted to go, you claim that all AI supporters are talentless tech bro grifters. But look, I support AI and I'm an actual pick up a pen artist who does not use AI. Checkmate, haters. But also it's just hard to learn to use a thing when my old way of doing things was perfectly serviceable. I'd already optimized my art style to be quick and effortless. I've literally stopped bothering with line art and clean coloring and making sure my shading stays inside the base because it's quicker to work on one layer. In a way, picking up AI kind of feels like I'd be wasting that optimization of my drawing process. What ultimately made me go screw it was, okay, it was finding out about the existence of control net which lets me dictate the composition of the image making it actually useful, but more to the point, Again, I didn't actually enjoy drawing that much, and eventually I found myself procrastinating by looking into this AI thing. It wasn't about feeling pressure to get ahead or wanting to become a grifter or, and make a quick buck or whatever. If anything, I knew it would absolutely tank my artist cred and did it anyway in spite of that. The last thing I already mentioned is uh, people are doing this AI art thing for esteem. They want to belong in the art world. They want to have the same reputation and they want to have a say in the art community. And I think that's why I really dislike it when big artists like the one we talked about in one of my previous videos and also other big artists give them credits because that's exactly what they could not have before and the AI art is like the ticket to that recognition and if you as a big artist give someone recognition for using AI art then it's like yeah that last little thing that separated them from our community they have it now and I don't particularly like that although I, I also don't like the fact that it matters to me the feeling I have reminds me very much of jealousy and I don't like for myself to be jealous but here we go I don't like it that other people are now allowed in the art community who have not had the same struggles as we had there it is and once you have the power it's really hard to give it away hence we're just all afraid we're just really scared people yeah no I don't get how you come to this point at all. AI users are now allowed in the art community? Since when? The big artist you talked about in one of your previous videos was universally condemned for his use of AI from what I could see. AI users are absolutely not welcome in the art community, let alone have a say, whatever that means for a loose collection of individuals grouped by a common trait rather than a common goal. Yeah, no one does AI art because they want approval from the art community. And again, I don't mean this as this against wanting approval. It's okay to want approval, but it's just blatantly absurd to me that someone will seek approval from a community by doing the one thing it hates the most right now. But I get what you're saying about giving away power and honestly respect for being so open about it you know i have savings quite a bit of savings accumulated from years of being insanely frugal since i'm fortunate enough to not need any medical upkeep so i only need food and shelter and if some years later capitalism gets abolished and our current property titles are deemed invalid and reconfigured i'll lose all those savings I could have used them to hire people to do whatever I want and I'd lose that. You know, capitalism sucks. Getting rid of it will be better for most people. I really believe that and I'm not going to cling on to the system or oppose people trying to dismantle it. But it's scary. I'm scared. Which brings you back to my fear points. Let's talk about fear. Fear is often used as some kind of offensive term to say, ah, oh, you're just afraid. It is absolutely a diss, and I think it's absolutely stupid. Feeling an emotion is never worthy of condemnation in itself, even if it's something meaner than fear, like hate or envy. It's what you do with that emotion that counts. Then I also want to say that there is not only fear on our side, on the artist's side, I think there's also a lot of fear on the AI artist side, which is that we, the art community, making all our videos, moaning about artists using AI, they think we want to take away that beautiful gift that AI art has given them. And I totally understand if someone told me, hey, I'm going to chop off your hand now, you will never be able to draw again. I would be scared as well. Absolutely. AI users are absolutely afraid. Still, I get you personally just want AI to be regulated, 
But there absolutely are people who want AI completely gone. Miss Curio uses Common Canvas, that model exclusively trained on art in the Creative Commons. People still harass her. There are people who think that AI is ontologically evil and slop and isn't worthy of existing because there was no effort put into making it. There are lawsuits going on as we speak, and while I'm not sure if they want to sue all AI out of existence, they want to make art style protected under trade dress, which, heck, forget being an AI user, that scares me as a drawing artist. And yes, they plan to somehow limit it to AI, but there is no foolproof way to tell AI art from drawn art. Artists are already getting falsely accused of using AI, and this is going to make the stakes a thousand percent worse. Yes. Both artists and AI artists are afraid, but again, it's what you do with that fear that matters. I'm yelling at you in a reaction video, other AI users are mocking your fear and calling you attention seekers, anti-AI people are sending death threats. What you wanted to say is, you want art to be equitable, I guess? Now maybe my English skills are lacking a bit to say this correctly, what you want to say. But I think you want that art is accessible for everyone. I do agree that it would be great for someone in a wheelchair who can't move anything to maybe with a device enter prompts, linguistic prompts and have like a creative thing they can do. I find that unbelievably great if they can do that. But on the other hand, I also have to say if, if that's your point that you think also people with disabilities have to have access to art, then I think you're very bloody fucking ignorant because a lot of people with disabilities, especially if they were artists before they had their accident, also if they just came to this world as a creative person, they have gone through the struggle to learn how to still make art even though they have disabilities. And actually it's, it's a coincidence that I know a few people who make art in a very curious way, you would call it if you have never seen it. So they might use their mouths to draw or paint, or they might just use their hands that they are barely able to use, but they still manage to do those motoric movements to create the art they want to create. And it doesn't matter that they have a disability. I saw a guy knitting a whole freaking scarf with his feet. So I, I just really, I, I'm really not happy about this attitude. That's just such a weak point. And then even more so, it says that people who have the ability to take a pen into their hand specifically, or the way that we are told to take pens into our hands at school, they should not be using AI art if that's what, what your point is. Then it should only be for people who have a real disability. I know stupid is a strong word, but in this case, I have to say, I find it utterly stupid. From the expression that you use, democratizing it doesn't fit at all. And also from the mindset that you think that all people with disabilities, they now want to enter prompt into a computer rather than going through the struggle to learn other ways to hold a pen. Then it's done for a healthy person who does not have a disability. Indy, that's called inspiration porn. I can tell you for a fact that if you broke my legs right now, I'd still be perfectly capable of rolling around on the ground to get from point a to point B. You don't seriously think that's an argument against mobility aids, do you? Oh, but that's a false equivalence, isn't it? It's more like if each mobility aid can only be created through sacrificing a puppy, because judging from the art community's behavior, art theft is just as bad as murdering a defenseless baby animal, clearly. And I don't know what these comments on your video said, but personally, I haven't encountered anyone who said all disabled people will be helpless without AI, or prefer using AI over wrestling with their motoric movements. You, on the other hand, seem to be suggesting all disabled people will prefer the inverse? I hope not, but just in case, here are some counterexamples. But yes, if accessibility for disabled people was their only argument in support of AI, then that's no reason for non-disabled people to use it indeed. But it's not. I've already been over this, to, so just go back to this timestamp if you forgot. But what I want to say is that you are keeping track of the things you accomplish in your life and the times when you did not accomplish them. So that means if you observe yourself doing stuff like that where you are not reliable or where you give up, you keep learning. Haha, <laughs> learning. It's almost like your AI model or your intelligence model keeps learning that you're not reliable and that is so complexly ingrained into the way 
that you think about yourself that this will eventually be super bad for yourself if you keep not doing stuff that is hard. It will just train you to never trust in yourself to be able to do that difficult task. This has a lot to do with self-care as well, because I think the greatest act of self-care is to take on a difficult task, take control of that task with an end goal in mind and prove to yourself that you can do it, or at least that you tried it. That's what it means to trust in yourself and not feel like a total loser all the time. Again, I don't say that AI users feel like total losers. I'm just taking this story to kind of tell you my concern with AI is that it's just another thing that makes it even easier to create not, not only art, that keeps us away from going the hard route. For example, if you're drawing backgrounds for your comic, um, what I have learned is that yes, it did take me much longer. I lost a lot of time doing all these, uh, studying all these backgrounds or studying perspective, not using any tools apart from some references. But even those you need less and less if you keep doing it yourself or if you keep um, practicing. And if the use of generative AI becomes your strategy, this means that you will not have that process of coming up with your own strategies. Maybe that's what you want. You as a comic creator should know that there's nothing inherently valorous about going the hard route. You yourself have said, and I quote, there are a lot of people among us who really rely on tools that make it easier to do what we want to do. Something something digital art, something something cameras, something something farming goats to make your drums. I'm sure you've all heard of it before and if you haven't, there's no shortage of pro AI people out there willing to explain it even more condescendingly than I'm doing here. On a more general note, I categorically reject the brave new world narrative that making things easier for people will cause society to decay into sloth and mindless hedonism. If people are taking the easy way out, it's because life is hard. They have no energy left to do even more hard things in the little time they have for themselves. And taking away their easy options isn't going to change that. You expect they'll pick up a pen instead of playing around with AI, or pick up a book instead of watching TV. But most likely they're just going to crawl into bed and stare at the ceiling. Well, but that's no excuse, is it? Life is hard for you too, yet you still muster the will to pick up a pen. Which of course brings us back to the art theft discourse, because why would you need an excuse in the first place? Because AI is immoral outside the part where it makes people lazy losers. But we just love conflating it all into one big ball of bad vibes. But let's at least try to focus on one argument at a time. If AI didn't exist, maybe some people would pick up a pen instead. But maybe taking the easy way out in method lets us become more ambitious in scope. What's harder, drawing a single picture or making a 100 page comic with AI? What's harder, drawing a 100 page comic or making a 100 minute animation with AI? You think AI is causing us to be stingy about our effort points? But again, we're only going to do that if we're hurting for effort points. If we're not, we're going to be spending the same amount of effort points regardless. We're just going to allocate them differently to optimize for whatever is most important to us. For you, that might be the process of drawing the satisfaction of knowing you made the marks with your own two hands or feet or whatever you use. But for some people, that's the end result. You're not going to make anyone feel a sense of accomplishment by telling them to make things arbitrarily harder for themselves by imposing on the hard part a meaning that you think should be there. Just like AI bros aren't going to do you any favors by telling you to use AI because it's a more efficient way to accomplish the only thing they think is meaningful in your work. I want you to have a bit of value that contributes to you being an artist. So if using AI is part of that journey, then I'm not going to stop you. I want to believe that, Indy. I really do. But when push comes to shove, artists have revealed over and over again that their top priority is their intellectual property rights and entitlement to control over their work. You think you can take whatever you want? Things you didn't make? Didn't earn? Things you don't even understand? You don't deserve to have this art- No, artists. I don't think you're naive. I think you're a bunch of hard-nosed cynics who live in a world of tit-for-tat, where everything has to be earned, where everything has to be deserved, 
incapable of imagining a world with everything for everyone, where everything must belong to someone, where it's justified, fair even, to keep infinitely copyable things under lock and key, a world of hard-working upstanding citizens and entitled freeloading thieves. I think that even though society idealizes you as dreamers, the advent of AI, something that affects your personal livelihoods, has revealed that you're just like everyone else. Who deserves what is irrelevant? For we each of us deserve everything, every luxury that was ever piled in the tombs of dead kings. And we each of us deserve nothing, not a mouthful of bread and hunger. Have we not eaten while another has starved? Will you punish us for that? Will you reward us for the virtue of starving while others ate? No man earns punishment, no man earns reward. Free your mind of the idea of deserving, the idea of earning, and you'll begin to be able to think.